Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna be harvesting a few things out of the garden, some beans, tomatoes, and carrots. And I just wanna show you where each one of these things are because they're all in incredibly different spots in our garden. And it's beautiful out today. It's 57 degrees right now, which is amazing. That's one of my favorite like temperature ranges from 50 to 70 degrees amazing and you know we can't be fooled though by this like one-off we had a couple of days that were beautiful but it's going to climb back up to 98 degrees by the end of this week so i'm out here just thoroughly enjoying myself the first thing we're going to harvest is right here on benjamin's trellis these are the red noodle beans and i've just noticed that they're starting to really produce so i wanted to get out here look at these and get them harvested. So this is a first for me. I have never grown these before. So here are the things I do know. I planted these on June 22nd, so quite late in the year. I could have planted them probably as early as the first week of May. Um, they are an 80 day maturity. They grow to about 18, inch, 18 inches long. So, I mean, it doesn't take very many beans to create a nice side dish for dinner. Um, and they maintain most of their color when cooking, which is fun because I've grown other purple or red beans, but typically when you cook them, they turn green. So this will be a really fun kind of variation and look in our dishes. Here's a bit of a front view. I really could have stayed on top of trimming, but honestly, Benjamin loves to go in here. I need to blow off the turf in here. This is AstroTurf, you guys. We get asked that quite a bit. I ordered a, hey Russell. I ordered a just roll of it and cut this piece to size and it's been awesome. And honestly, it doesn't look half bad. Looks better when all that junk's not on it, but that's what the wind brought in. So I don't know how many we'll get this morning, but I don't wanna miss out. So I'm just gonna start harvesting these and I'll figure out something, maybe a stir fry tonight to have for dinner. They're just so cool looking. So I got these particular seeds down at the garden center. My parents carry a brand called Snake River Seed Cooperative, I think. They're local to our valley. Uh, anyway, they have some really unique varieties and I thought, ooh, when I saw that seed packet, I gotta plant those. So anyway, let's start harvesting. Look at these, you guys, aren't they pretty? I mean, I usually don't consider beans to be pretty, but these are, they're so vibrantly colored. And because of their color, it makes them very easy to pick. You can see them really easily. So this is probably too much for one meal. We'll probably get a couple meals out of this, but there are already a whole bunch of baby beans, which you can see like, you can see that one right there. There are some hanging off to the side right there. So I'm guessing we'll get a few more really nice size harvests out of this little area. This really excites me. I mean, I always like to plant my tried and true varieties of things. Like I've got jade beans growing out as a fall crop in the new cut flower garden area and some Kentucky wonder pole beans. Um, there are a few other beans I really like and I always grow those, but it's fun to throw in a new variety or two every year because you never know, you might find a new favorite and it's good to get experience with different stuff too. I'm actually gonna go throw those in the fridge right now before I go start harvesting carrots. So here we are in the vegetable garden, which is looking kind of bare at the moment. I'm right in between harvest and planting new things like greens and radishes. I've already got new zinnias coming up. I'm saving this bed and this bed for garlic, and that's why those are empty. But here are the carrots. They are going to seed. They are also roofing over there, so that's what all the noise is. The other thing, and the reason why I'm not just leaving these carrots in the ground, because honestly, like when it gets cold, the flavor improves a little bit, um, but they have spider mites really bad, as do my boxwoods just right over there. I'm hoping to film a video about spider mites today because I need to start my spray regimen. But these right here, I thought, you know what? I can harvest them all. I don't need to keep all these carrots. I can take whatever I don't want um, down to the food bank today. But I need to gently dig all these carrots up, gently remove all of the um, leaves that are affected and get rid of them so that hopefully they don't spread to the arborvitas, which I haven't noticed any mite damage on yet. That would be a pain if those arbs got mites. So anyway, these are Danvers half long carrots, um, which I really like. They're a favorite in our area. Uh, I planted them from seed on March 22nd. So I've been able to harvest a few here and there as I've needed them, uh, but I do have quite a number of them still left. And you can see I did a fantastic job of thinning. <laughs> so I've got some small ones and some like perfect size ones. Typically Danvers half longs are like six to eight inch carrots. 
I might run into a few monsters though. Last year, I left my carrots in the ground, um, like the ones I had seeded in the spring, and I let them go through. I like harvested some throughout the fall, um, but once spring or late winter, early spring rolled around, those carrots were so like almost gross looking. I think I have a picture of one I posted that looked alien-esque. Anyway, I'm gonna get these harvested and then we'll take a look at how many I've got. that spider mites affect the leaves of the plant but not the fruit in any way. So the carrots underneath the soil are totally fine but I wanted to give you a close-up look at what mite damage looks like. So here they all are, all the tops of the carrots and this right here. Hopefully I can get it to focus. Let me put it on a darker background so you can see just what it looks like. It gets this kind of silvery spotted speckled appearance and if you look really really closely you'll see tiny little webbing um, and they're just like little tiny mites that usually reside underneath, like on the undersides of leaves, and they suck the sap out of the leaves, and that's what creates all of the discoloration. And once you get mites take hold, they are incredibly hard to get rid of. I also saved a few of the seed heads. Check out what they look like. They're all dried out. This is so many seeds, you guys. Like, I could start doing this. Look at all those seeds coming off. And this is an open pollinated variety, um, so I can save these and they will come up to be Danvers half longs again next year. It's kind of exciting, isn't it? Now let's harvest. a garden steak could be entertainment. <laughs> well, we've got a cleaned out rice bed and quite a haul of carrots. I think we should go get them cleaned up and spread out so that we can see what we've got. is a diverse looking harvest, all different shapes and sizes. They're really nice looking though. I mean, given the fact that they were in the ground for so long and I should have harvested them earlier, I'm pretty pleased. And I had sizes all the way from this right here, this is the tiniest one, all the way up to bigger woodier ones, which honestly, they're not good for fresh eating. These are better um, just cut up and put in like roasted vegetables or in soups and stews and things like that. And I really only had just a handful of malformed carrots right here, which you'll see they form kind of, like this one has two stems and they'll form extra pieces and look a little questionable, questionable characters. So these are definitely good to chop up where looks don't matter, that doesn't affect the flavor um, and used in soups and stews. So there are a couple of different reasons why this might happen to your carrots. The first one, which is what I think I'm dealing with, is compaction of soil. When a carrot cannot reach down like through loose soil and form a nice root like this, like this right here, they'll rather like look for different avenues and they'll form different little arms um, that will cause that malformity. And I think that's what I'm dealing with because these all came out of one kind of area in the bed and the fact that most of them came out shaped nice um, makes me think that's why. 
I've been dealing with compaction issues in that one raised bed in just that one corner since the very beginning, which doesn't make any sense to me because I started with the same raised bed mix. Uh, but I planted root crops in there on purpose to help kind of punch down and work through and break up that soil. Um, so I think the more compost I add in and the more things I do like this to help break it up, I think that'll help. The other couple things are nematodes, which are little tiny, almost microscopic living organisms in the soil which can cause malformities and those can be treated with Bacillus thuringiensis which is BT or thuricide <laughs> cheddars rubbing all over my arm um, and then there's another disease and I don't know if I'm gonna remember this name exactly but it's like phytoplasma aster and that is caused by leaf hoppers, which I do not have. So I do not think that that is the issue, but that can also be treated, I believe, by BT. I've never had to deal with that. Look at this cat. <laughs> He's like, pay attention to me now. Anyway, I think what I'm gonna do with most of this harvest since there are only a handful of like good car uh, carrots to eat fresh, like to eat that are not woody, I think I'm just gonna cut up most of these and freeze them and use them throughout the winter in soups. And we like roasted vegetables a lot. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with these instead of donating this crop because I don't wanna donate a bunch, a bunch of like, here you go, here's my carrot harvest. Embarrassing. But I'm really happy with that. That's a lot of good eating right there. And all I used to clean them was the hose there, just a little trickle of water and a, just a regular cleaning brush. This is fairly soft, it just helps knock the dirt off. And then there were just a handful of carrots I didn't clean because these belonged to the ones that formed that really big seed stock that had like all the seed heads on top and these are just hard as a rock. I don't think, like their skin's all puckered. They don't look very good. Not many though. And if you were looking to store these like long-term, if you had a root cellar or somewhere that was appropriate temperature, you could leave the soil on the carrots and just clean them as you pull them out of storage. Cause oftentimes you're putting them in layers of sand or peat moss or something like that in order to uh, elongate their storage time. And we are putting in a root cellar. I think it might be going in this week, but I wasn't sure. And since I'm gonna be cutting up most of these to freeze, I think I was, uh, I don't know. Just wanted to get them all cleaned up before I took them inside. Okay, the last harvest thing for this morning are tomatoes, and they are a wild, woolly mess again. And here we are. Wild, woolly mess of plants right here. I had one tomato out of 30 not make it, which is totally fine because we have plenty here. I pruned these back really hard mid-July, and they have since put on a ton, ton of fruit. It's just crazy how much, and I've been picking them too. Like, it's just insane. You look inside, there's one that's cracked a little bit. Um, but they're just loaded up with fruit all over. And I'm not sure that I'm gonna actually tackle pruning these today, even though it needs to be done desperately bad. But I wanna get some of these gorgeous, or all of them that are ripe, these tomatoes picked. Look how pretty that is. It's beautiful. I also have a lot of different varieties out here. So 29 tomato plants total, seven of which are the red currants, which makes up the mass that's over there. And there's really not a lot of fruit sitting on those. I should have pruned those the first time I didn't because I wanted to have nice long stems, but they've produced so much shrubby growth and so many blooms and not very many fruit that I think I should have pruned those. Um, but I think I'm gonna have plenty of tomatoes with the other, what is that, 18? tomato plants. I was looking at the red currant tomatoes just now and I take it back. There are tomatoes all over on those plants. Look at this. Little itty bitty tomatoes and then they turn red. Well orange first and then red. But these plants are loaded. So I'm just gonna go one variety at a time here. Here's the harvest from the first plant. These are called 4th of July tomatoes. Wonderful flavor and a really nice size. I'm gonna attempt to keep all the varieties separate in the back of the gator here, so in the end we can kind of have an overview of the whole harvest from today. It just amazes me that there were this many tomatoes on this plant. And this is the plant that's been probably one of the more productive ones in terms of it started producing right around the first part of July, um, end of June, first part of July, and has just kept on going. Great big 
big heirloom type tomatoes, which are massive, have a longer maturity day. So they're just starting to ripen right now. The plant itself has a ton of huge green tomatoes on it. Um, so we'll just start being able to harvest. Like there were a few that were almost ready, but these were beautiful today. They've always got kind of a funny shape, but the best flavor. You know what, I think to expedite this process, I'm gonna get them all harvested and laid out, and then we'll take a look at the whole haul all at one time. hoping that the wind would die down by the time I was done picking tomatoes, but it just kind of keeps coming in big gusts and I feel like I have that powdery dirt in my teeth at this point. But look at that. Isn't that the most beautiful thing? Oh, I'm so excited. Quick overview, the whole thing. Look at that. It's like the most glorious thing ever. So real quick, running back through the varieties, we've got the 4th of July champions right here. There's Goldie's, uh, Garden Treasure, Sunny Boys. There's two pineapple, one pineapple and two hillbillies. Then we've got one called Garden Gem, which starts right here and it's this whole section and it also goes up into there. If there's one variety I could tell you to grow for really amazing flavor and productivity, that would definitely be the one. It's pretty amazing. And here's the Brandywine and Poster that are more like cocktail tomatoes. Really tasty and nice and firm. Wish I kind of knew what that was. Then we've got the Mortgage Lifters, Yellow Pears, Super Fantastics, Sun Sugars, Cherokee Purples, and the Fat Mamas. So real quick, a few things I've learned this year is that one, no matter how much I think I need 30 tomato plants, I just, I don't. I don't need 30 tomato plants. Although it's been really fun and that's amazing and we can feed some people with that, which is awesome. So I'll take some uh, inside and then I'll take the rest to the food bank. Um, but the plants are still loaded. I mean, I have been picking up to this point. This is my first like going through all the plants and picking whatever is ripe. Um, up to now, I've just been taking things as I need them inside or I just, I just pick them and eat them while I'm out here. Um, and the plants still have at least three to four times this amount on them still that have yet to ripen. And we still have about a month and a half yet before they'll be done. The second thing is that the soil out here is not near as bad as I thought it was. I mean, I am not dealing with any kind of issues, like no disease or fungal issues. Of course, the wind sure helps with that. It keeps them, everything nice and dry out here. Um, I'm not dealing with calcium deficiency or blossom end rot, you know, with that dark kind of black watery spot at the bottom of tomatoes. I've seen it on a couple, but it's very isolated and it's not like the whole plant has shown that. Um, the third thing I have learned is that um, I need to put my tomatoes on a separate watering zone. So right now, um, we have them all connected with the vine crops, all the pumpkins and watermelons, cantaloupe, and the vine crops, they take a tremendous amount of water to keep them nice when it's hot outside, to keep them from wilting. The tomatoes don't need that much water, so typically what that means is that you'll see splitting or cracking on the top of your tomatoes. And I've seen it on a few, but not very many. The Cherokee purples showed it the worst, um, but the other ones, it was very hit and miss, and for the most part, they all look really nice. But I think that next year, having them on their own zone will be nice because I think it'll be less wasteful of water. So anyway, that is gonna wrap up today's video. I'm super excited with everything today. All the harvests that we um, got to do, it feels, I don't know, it's just an amazing thing. It feels so good to grow your own stuff, doesn't it? I mean, it's just like nothing really beats that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an awesome day. I need to go take a shower and brush my teeth after all this powdery dirt. So I'm calling it a day. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.